Hi class, this is Sir Alex again. Welcome to our lesson in General Physics 1. Today we're going to continue on our discussion of kinematics of translation. We'll be focusing on projectile motion in our lesson 3.4. So to begin our lesson, let's first discuss what will be the goals so far today's class. First is for us to deduce the consequences of the independence of vertical and horizontal components of projectile motion. Second is for us to be able to calculate the range, the time of flight, and even the maximum heights of projectile motions. So before we begin our discussion of projectile motion, let's uh, first be reminded of the kinematics of translation equations that we have discussed so far. In 6.2, I believe we started our discussion on uniform motion. Or in this is the equations, these are the kinematics of equations that we use when we are solving for uniform motion along a straight line. So velocity is basically equal to the distance over time. This is how we get the displacement. And this is for acceleration. And last, we previously discussed on free fall, wherein we can compute for the displacement of free fall using these equations and as well as the acceleration and in free fall we've discussed the acceleration we use the acceleration due to gravity which is g which is equals to negative 9.8 just write that here which is equals to negative 9.8 meters per second squared so that is the acceleration for free fall. And we can use this equation to get uh, the displacement in y and even here. Okay, so I hope you guys remember these equations because for projectile motion, we'll be using a lot of these equations today. So let's begin by understanding what is projectile motion. Projectile motion is basically a motion of a body thrown horizontally on an angle other than 90 degrees. So what do we mean by that is we basically throw a by uh, an object, could be a stone, over a clip, something like that. So we throw an object horizontally over a certain degree above the horizontal. So this is the horizontal. This uh, dotted line right here this is our horizontal and at a certain angle we throw something and that is what we call a projectile motion and these projectile motion has two independent components I want you guys to take note of this word independent which means these two components do not affect or do not rely on to each other so first is the horizontal component which is a uniform motion so the horizontal component of the projectile motion it will be dealing with the uniform motion that we've uh, talked previously, we've discussed previously, while the vertical component actually deals with the free fall or free falling motion. So in order for us to be able to solve uh, problems uh, in projectile motion, we, we should be able to understand or we should have a, a good knowledge on uniform motion along a straight line and the free fall motion because if we com uh, com combine these two together that's actually how we get projectile motion the horizontal component of the projectile motion is in, is in a uniform motion while the vertical component is in a free falling motion if we look at here so we have let's say I think of this as a cannon and we are uh, blasting a cannonball at a certain angle above the horizontal, so we can think of this as your horizontal, and it's moving at a horizontal, and it was uh, let's say we threw it at a certain velocity, initial, certain initial velocity, and the components of this projectile motion has two parts. The horizontal component, which is the component right here, and the component which is vertical, which is going this way. 
as you can see that with the arrows so the arrows that you see on the ball the moving ball in this moving picture is actually the velocities as you can see the velocity for the horizontal which is the vx this is our horizontal this is one of our horizontal component is not moving because it's in a uniform motion and remember in a uniform motion the acceleration is zero meters per second squared so the speed the velocity is not changing on the other hand the vy which is our vertical component is actually changing as you can see it started off at a it's uh before as you can see it starts positive right and then as you can see it goes lower and lower until it reaches the maximum height max vy when it reaches the maximum height vy or the velocity at the maximum height in the vertical component is actually zero meters per second what happens then is it will start to go down and as you can see the negative is increasing so i want you guys to remember that as the projectile goes up the vy is in the positive as the projectile starts to go down, the VY is in the negative. So that is the vertical component and the horizontal component of uh, the projectile motion. The acceleration in the projectile motion is also G, which is only in, as I mentioned here, the horizontal acceleration is actually zero. But for vertical, the acceleration is equal actually equals to g, which is equals to negative 9.8 meters per second. That is because the vertical component of a projectile motion is only an example of a. It's actually a free falling motion. And if you guys remember, in free falling motion, the acceleration is due to gravity, which is g, which is equals to negative 9.8 meters per second. Sorry. The path taken uh, by the projectile motion is what we call trajectory. And we usually uh, neglect air resistance and pro solving projectile motion, as which we will do in our course for projectile motion. In this lesson, we will be uh, neglecting air resistance. Otherwise, our vertical component would actually change. Similarly, that's why why we also <clears throat> we neglect uh, air resistance in the free fall lesson that we have uh, so that we have a uh, the kinematics equation would work okay so this is another you know, moving picture so the projectile motion is the uh, or the trajectory is the path taken by the object in the projectile motion again so you have your horizontal and it's uh, basically thrown above the horizontal and it has the horizontal component which is vx and it has a vertical component which is in the vy and it's thrown at a certain initial velocity so these are the horizontal and the vertical components of projectile motion Let's continue on. Uh, let's talk about the projectile motion equations. So considering that the horizontal component is in uniform motion for the horizontal and the vertical component is in free fall, which uh, this means both of these are kinematic equations, which means for projectile motion, we can actually use the kinematic equations on projectile motion. However, we should separate uh, those two because these two are independent. We have horizontal equations for our projectile motion and we also have vertical equations or vertical kinematic equations for our projectile motion. As I mentioned earlier, for acceleration, the acceleration of the horizontal component of our projectile 
motion is always zero. That is because uh, the horizontal component is in uniform motion. For vertical component, the acceleration is, or the AY, the acceleration in the Y axis is equals to G, which is equals to 9.8 meters per second square. When solving for velocity, the velocity of the projectile motion has two components as well, vertical and horizontal. And you might remember these in our uh, vectors. So if, if we draw the projectile motion, it can look something like this. So when we start throwing the ball, that ball has a certain initial velocity and like i mentioned it has a horizontal and vertical component which means it has a vx and similarly it has vy and if you guys remember in your um in your vector component we can actually use the vert uh the vector component that we've learned in solving for vy and Vx. Since uh, let's begin in the horizontal component. For our horizontal components, it's, it's in a uniform motion. The initial velocity, we, uh, we can find the Vx or the initial velocity in the x component, which we can write as Vox, is equals to the initial velocity. This is the initial velocity. multiplied by cosine theta. And that's how we actually solve for the initial velocity, initial horizontal velocity. And this initial horizontal velocity is actually equal to Vx because, again, it doesn't change, okay? It doesn't change. So Vx is always equals to the initial horizontal velocity, which we use Vo or the initial velocity multiplied by cosine theta. As for Vy, we can uh, get Vy by doing the same thing. So you have your initial velocity. And this initial velocity multiplied by sine theta or the angle about the angle you can get the initial this is the initial vertical velocity and this in the and uh, we can get the vy or the accelerate this is only the initial yeah and then if we want to get the uh, velocity in uh, in any point in the in the vertical axis or in the y axis, we can actually do. Uh, you can actually use this equation. Vy is equal to the initial uh, vertical velocity plus gt. The reason that we do this plus gt is because the y axis is only uh, is only what they call this. It's only affected by G. Remember, uh, velocity increases or decreases depending on the acceleration. So, so the, uh, the velocity in the y-axis is actually influenced by, as you can see here, the, the gravity or the g, the acceleration due to gravity, and whatever, how long it is, uh, how long the flight is, or how long was the travel, or how long was it in the air? So by do by adding gt plus uh, on the vertical or the initial vertical velocity, we can get the vy. As for displacement, meaning how far it traveled, so this is the horizontal uh, displacement. So meaning how far did the ball or whatever the body in projectile motion travel while we we can use this equation right here to solve for how 
the dy so the length or on the y axis okay so again i want you guys to remember that these two are independent of each other one does not affect each other okay so let's continue on another thing that i want you guys to remember it is important to take note of these following at any instance the velocity of a projectile so this time we are talking about the magnitude of the velocity so far we've discussed how we can get the uh, velocity in the x-axis and the velocity in the y-axis but if we want to get the velocity itself on any instance of a projectile we would use this equation so you can see this is very similar with our resultant that is because again if we draw this this is our velocity right of our projectile motion and then it has its x component and it has its y component and in order for us to solve this we just only have to use the Pythagorean theorem so that's how we can get the magnitude or the total velocity of the uh, moving object and also the direction we always use uh, with the horizontal so with the horizontal the direction we usually use phi uh, which is equals to uh, tangent arc tangent uh, and then the absolute value of your vy divided by the absolute value of your vx so that's how we get the uh, angle from the horizontal as we draw our object okay so that's this one okay so this is uh, at any instance okay at the highest point of its trajectory only the vertical velocity is zero the horizontal velocity is still vx so if, if we draw the a projectile motion like this so this is an example of a projectile motion at the highest point so this is dy max at this highest point the vx is equal is still equals to the initial velocity on the x or on the horizontal axis while vy at this point is actually zero the reason for this is it's basically stop. It's at this point it's not going up anymore. At the same time, it's it's not going down. So past uh, before it arrives. So before it arrives at the highest point, the v y is positive, and as soon as it arrives on the highest point, v y is equals to zero, and past that vy will start to go down and vy will become negative okay so i've mentioned that earlier okay and lastly the acceleration at the highest point of trajectory it's still g so even though the velocity uh at the horizontal axis is zero here the acceleration is still g or negative 9.8 meters per second Okay, projectile motion. For a projectile fired at an angle above the horizontal, the projectile raises a maximum height and then descends. Okay, we've discussed that. It will then land at some horizontal distance from its launching point. This horizontal distance is called range. The maximum range is obtained by throwing the projectile uh, 45 degrees above the horizontal. So if you want to get the maximum range or the maximum dx, dx max, uh, you have to throw any uh, any object you want at the 45 degree angle above the horizontal. Projectile motion also exhibits, I hope you guys remember, time symmetry and speed symmetry. So let's have it here. 
Again, so when you throw an object, it has an initial velocity. And in order to get the VY, we have to multiply the initial velocity to sine theta. And that, that will get you the initial velocity on the Y. The same thing, initial velocity multiplied by cosine angle will get you the initial velocity in the X axis. And this distance from point here, point of launch, and the point of landing, this distance is called range. And the height and the maximum height, or which we can also call the zenith, uh, the object arrives is, is called or is called the zenith. And we use this, uh, we can use the we will use the y for the uh, for the height, and we would use the x for the range. The height it reaches is actually influenced only by the vertical velocity. So I want you to remember that Vy is only influenced or Dy is only influenced by the vertical velocity. Moreover, the time of flight is only influenced by Vy. So if you want to find the time of flight, the time it takes for uh, the object to move from here to the here so the time it is in the air it is only influenced by the initial velocity on the y-axis so again so the maximum height or, or dy and the time of flight which is t are only these so are only influenced by the initial velocity on the vertical axis or the vy but for range it is both influenced by uh, uh, the initial velocity in the x axis and also the time of flight okay so and uh, and if you guys remember like i mentioned earlier the time of flight is influenced by, by v uh vy after getting vy that's when you can get the range because you need the time of light and then you have you need to get the velocity on the x axis okay so i want you guys to remember those and again so this is the point of launch and when you throw a certain object it has an initial velocity and this initial velocity is separated into two components, the horizontal component or the horizontal component and the vertical component. To get the horizontal component, you just have to multiply the initial component or initial velocity by cosine theta. Theta is the angle above the horizontal. And to get the horizontal or to get the vertical component, you have to multiply the initial component of your or the initial velocity of your project out to sine theta and then upon reaching the highest height vy is actually zero but a is still g negative 9.8 meter per second vx is still the initial uh is still vo cosine theta which is uh but but a is equal to zero meters per second because the velocity on the x-axis or the horizontal does not change. Okay, for the height, it is only influenced by vka, a vy, or the vertical velocity. The time of light or the time it is in the air is only influenced by vy. But for range, it is influenced by both vx and t, or the time of light. Okay.
So let's have an example problem uh, and try to see how we use this equations in solving projectile motion. So a ball thrown horizontally from a height of 5.5 meters with an initial speed or initial velocity of 25 meters per second. How long will it take the ball to reach the ground? B. At what horizontal distance from the point of release will it strike the ground? C. What will be the magnitude of its velocity when it strikes the ground? And D. At what direction will it strike the ground? So let's move to the whiteboard to solve this problem. Okay. <clears throat> Sample problem 3.4. Okay. So let's uh, try it and draw what is happening. So a ball thrown horizontally from a height of 5.5 meters. So meaning you throw the ball not on the ground but a certain height. Okay, so we begin by a certain dy which is equals to 5.50 meters. So you start here. And if you look at the equation, let's uh, just write it this way. Okay, so 5.50. And if you look at the equation, it says a ball is thrown horizontally. So actually, in this problem, we don't have an angle. So the ball is thrown horizontally. So let's say that's our ball right there. Okay. And the initial speed of that ball is actually the initial velocity is 25 meters per second. So let's write our given. So the initial velocity of our ball is 25 meters per second. And then we have a dy of 5.50 meters. So what are they asking us? First, letter A, how long will it take the ball to reach the ground? So how long we're denoting time? So we're basically asking for the time of flight. How long is the ball in the air? Basically, how long will it take the ball to reach uh, the ground and for B at what horizontal distance so we're talking about the range at what horizontal distance from the point of release will it strike the ground C what will be the magnitude of its velocity when it strikes the ground so what would be the velocity at the ground and will be the magnitude of the velocity when it strikes the ground. And in D, at what direction will it strike the ground? So the direction will it strike the ground. Okay, so after getting uh, what they were asking us, uh, let's write our formula. So the formula uh, basically is the uh, we're looking for the time of flight. For the time of flight, as I have mentioned earlier, the time of flight is only dependent on the horizontal. So one of the horizontal kinematics equation we have to choose, and the one that we'll be choosing is dy is equals to the initial velocity in the y-axis multiplied by time plus one half gt squared because it's uh, one of the equation that has the time in it and in the horizontal also v of y and dy because again remember time of life is only influenced by the horizontal component 
Another equation that we will have to use is uh, finding the range uh, for finding the range we have to use dx one of the equation is dx which is uh, from the kinematics of equation is v of x multiplied by time and we're also looking for the uh, velocity the magnitude of the velocity when it hits the ground so uh, this is the magnitude of the velocity this is the velocity of the ball not just the component so if you guys remember we uh, the component uh, velocity has two components x and y and to get the magnitude of the velocity we have to use the Pythagorean theorem okay so so what else? So we also have to use, since we're looking for direction, we have to use the phi, which is equals to tangent multiple uh, arc tangent multiplied by, I believe it was vy over vx. So the absolute value of uh, vx over divided by vy, the absolute value multiplied by arc tangent. Okay, so so since these some of uh, these are some of the equations that we have to use. Moreover, some of the equations that we have to use since we have to find VOY and VOX is VOY, if you guys remember where VOY is equals to the initial velocity sine theta and VOX is equals to the initial velocity cosine theta. So that's some of the equations that we we have to use as well okay um, and also since we have to use uh, vx and voy vx if you guys remember it's equals to vox so vx is equals to vox and vy is equals to voy plus gt okay so I have a lot of equations so basically we have to use all the equations uh, almost all the equations in the kinematics of equation from uh, the table that I showed you. Okay, so let's uh, go, go on the solution. Okay. So we are looking first for the time of flight. Okay. So I've drawn this. So what is happening here so as you can see in this example the angle uh, uh, the way that we draw it the angle is basically zero degrees because it was drawn horizontally so if it says if it's drawn at uh, 30 degrees above the horizontal you just have to change this angle right here so in order for us to solve for the time of light we have to have the VOY. So what we have to do is first uh, solve for our VOY and we know that VOY is equals to VO sine theta and we know that the initial velocity is 25 meters per second sine and the angle of release is zero degrees so VOY is actually equal to zero degrees uh, zero meters per uh, second so this is the initial velocity in the y-axis uh, y-axis now let's uh, solve for the time of light so using this equation right here dy is equals to voy time plus one half gt squared okay so since we have our VOY, we have our DY, and we're only looking for T. And we know our G. G it will always be G will always be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay. But one thing that I want you guys to remember, this point of release, this point right here is our origin. So if that's our origin, anything that is above the origin 
is positive and anything below the origin is negative. And as you can see, we throw the ball 5.5 meters above the ground. So we have a dy of 5.50 meters. And, and as you can see, this uh, dy is below our point of origin. What we should do then is this dy should be negative. So our dy should be negative. So we have negative 5.50 meters and x equals to our v of y is 0 meters per second multiplied by t plus 1 half g is negative 9.8 meters per second multiplied by t squared. So this would be 0 and we can solve for t basically t is equals to negative 5.50 meters um, multiplied by 2 divided by 9, negative 9.8 meters per second squared and then we just have to square both sides and this would give us positive and negative 1.06 seconds and in this scenario we have to choose positive always choose positive for time because we don't have negative time anyway so the time of light is 1.06 seconds okay so if you guys didn't know what happened to here i just basically rearranged this equation so this is zero you have one half uh you basically multiply both sides to 2 so that's how you get 2 here 2 times 5.5 uh, 5.5 meters and if I multiply this by 2 the 2 would be cancelled and then I just divided both sides by negative 9.8 meters per second squared that's how we get that and the squared a square root came because there's a squared in t and we want to remove that okay so that's basic algebra so that's how we get t so you may have a question what if uh, v o y is not equals to zero so what if is this is not zero so it means i cannot cancel this t so i would have t and t squared if that is a scenario you can use the quadratic equation to solve for t quadratic equation and if you guys remember quadratic equation is x is equals to negative p plus and minus the square root of p squared minus 4ac divided by 2a so using the quadratic equation if this right here is not zero you would have to use the quadratic equation for x so let's move on on B. So in B, we want to find the range. So if you guys remember, uh, in range, we have to consider the Vx and time. So we already got the time. So what we need now is the Vx. And we can get the Vx by this equation right here. So the V, the initial velocity in the x is equal to the initial initial velocity cosine theta so v o x is equals to 25 meters per second cosine and zero degree at zero degree and v o x is equal to 26 point on oh, that 26 point oh, it's actually equal to 24 uh, 25 meters per second so just use calculator and vx is since it's a uniform motion it's not changing so vx is equals 25 meters per second so for uh, measuring range we just have to use dx is equals to 
v of x times t which is equals to um, dx 25 meters per second multiplied by the time that we got previously and the distance traveling traveled horizontally is equals to 26.5 meters okay so now let's solve for t okay uh c i mean so c is the velocity on the ground so what is the magnitude of the velocity in the ground so when we're talking about the magnitude of the velocity it's not only vx and it's not only v uh it's not only vx and not only vy but we are looking for the total velocity which is a vx squared plus vy squared we know that vx is equals to vox and that vy is equals to the initial velocity in the y plus gt so we found the t we know the g we can solve for vy v of y is equals to zero which we got earlier right here uh, plus uh, nine point negative nine point eight meters per second squared multiplied by one point zero six seconds so vy is actually equal to uh, negative 10 point 10.4 meters per second so why is it negative as you can see this point right here if you guys remember this point is already the highest point because we're not going on top of any of anywhere so uh, at this point voy if you guys remember at the highest point v vy and voy is actually zero so from here on out it's actually only just going down that is why our vy is in the negative because it's only our vy at this point is only going down so what is the velocity as it reached the ground so the velocity of the x-axis is actually equal to which we measured earlier, 25.0 meters per second squared plus negative 10.4 meters per second squared. And the velocity as it reached the ground is uh, equal to 27 positive and minus or positive and negative 27.1 meters per second. And as I've mentioned earlier, since we are at the ground, our velocity should be negative. So we'll be using negative 27.1 meters per second. Okay. I hope you guys don't get confused. So why is it negative? But that is the answer. Again, it is negative because it's in the ground. So the velocity is basically going down. Okay. And lastly, let's solve for D. Uh, D is basically uh, the direction as it hits the ground. So the direction as it hits the ground, the direction, like any of the factors that we've uh, measured so far, is an angle. It's a tangent Vy over Vx. So the arc tangent of our Vy is, uh, we'll be using only the absolute value multiplied by 25.0 meters per second so phi is equals to 
or 22.6 degrees. Okay, so that is the direction that it is going as it hits the ground. 22.6 degrees. So that is the direction of the ball as it hits the ground. Okay, so that's how we use um, our solve for projectile motion. And if you guys want, you can try and solve for the maximum height. So for the maximum height, uh, you can try this. So E, maximum height. So maximum height is basically dy max and dy max if you guys actually just think about it like i mentioned earlier the maximum height since we did not throw it in the angle so the maximum height is is basically 5.50 meters because we already started at the maximum height if we throw this as an angle yeah, uh, the maximum height would change, but we did not throw it in an angle, we throw it horizontally, so the maximum height is basically the dy. Okay, so I hope um, that is clear. If you guys have any questions about projectile motion, if there are things that are not clear, uh, you guys can message me and uh, we'll have our next lesson. We'll have a lot more practice on these kinematics equations. Okay, so I hope you guys have a good day and thank you so much.